Well, we've come to the end of our second DVD in our series on creating shaders in HLSL. I hope that as a result of studying this DVD, your understanding of how lighting in computer graphics has uh, been expanded and that you have a better understanding of, of how point lights, omni lights, directional lights, and global illumination and lighting models work. And uh, that you have now a good platform to build uh, as you continue to study lighting and shaders. So let's take a look briefly at, at some of the topics that we've covered on the DVD. In chapter one, we started out by talking about normal mapping. And normal mapping is essential to talk about lighting um, because of how, of how it affects the surface shape of objects and uh, how it alters the way lighting interacts with surfaces. In chapters two, three, and four, we covered the basics of the lighting model. We talked about ambient lighting, diffuse lighting, and specular lighting, and we went over the code uh, that's required to include these in your shader. And we also talked about how these three components work together uh, to create the final lighting on your model. Now, I think it's important to remember that uh, as you continue to create your own lighting models, they don't have to include ambient, diffuse, and specular at all. You know, you could create something that's completely integrated that has all three of these um, just working as one and not separate. Uh, or you could create, you know, new shaders that don't have one or more of these components. So these aren't hard and fast rules. You can definitely go, go beyond these principles. So in chapters 5, 6, and 7, we talked about additional lighting topics. Um, in chapter 5, we talked about light attenuation, or how light gets weaker as the light source gets further away. And this is important for uh, creating realistic light sources. Chapter 6 and 7, we talked about directionals and spotlights. It's important to have uh, lots of different types of lights for different lighting situations. But obviously, these aren't the only types of lights that there are. So if you'd like to continue your study, you know, go out and try to develop your own types of light sources. Finally, in chapters 8, 9, and 10, we talked about one way of creating global illumination. The problem with uh, point lights, directional lights and spotlights is that really they're only light that's coming from one specific direction. And obviously we know in the real world light bounces all over the place and directional lights, spotlights, and point lights don't account for bouncing light. So we need some way of getting the light to, to bounce off of things and come from every direction. And so like I said in chapters 8, 9, and 10 we talked about one way of creating this global illumination using the two components of ambient occlusion that we talked about in chapter 8 and then our diffusely convolved cube maps which we went over in chapters 9 and 10. Now like I said uh, this is only one way of creating global illumination and there are lots of other ways out of, of doing it that have uh, fewer drawbacks perhaps and maybe some sticky points of their own, but be sure to go out and, and study some additional methods of global illumination in real time as well. In chapters 11 and 12 and 13, we talked about additional lighting models. We talked about Fong, Cook Torrance, and Oren Nayer. Now in addition to these three, there are lots of additional lighting models. Uh, so you might study Minarch or the Ward lighting model or the Kajia K lighting model. Go out on the web and, and look for these additional lighting models and with the material that we've covered on the DVD you should be able to look at other people's lighting models uh, beyond what we've covered here, understand them and apply them in your own shaders. Now in the folder on the DVD for this chapter I've included a file that contains links to additional learning resources, books, shaders on the web, sites with shader tutorials and other resources. I recommend that you check out some of these sources to continue your study of shaders. To continue learning, the best way to do it is to grab a book or download some effect shaders from the web and study the work of others. And with the information that we've provided in the first and second DVDs in the series, you should be able to look at other people's shaders and uh, see what's going on there and take some of their ideas as well. Finally, I just thought I'd mention a few of the things that we'll be covering in the next DVD on HLSL shaders. Now that we've covered the basics of the language and the nuts and bolts of lighting, we're ready to get into some exciting effects. The third DVD in the series will cover material properties with shaders. We'll discuss offset or 
parallax mapping, reflection and refraction, detail normal mapping, vertex color and alpha, and Fresnel rim lighting, just to name a few. These are some shader features that I've really enjoyed learning about, and I'm excited to share them with you. I hope that with this DVD, I've expanded your view of what's possible to do with shaders and given you a few more tools and techniques that you can use to improve your own shaders. Now it's time for you to take what you've learned, add your own creativity to it, and go out and create the next generation in real-time graphics. Good luck.